Good morning. Welcome to church. Do you see the seriousness of the sermon this morning? We need to start with a prayer. Please pray with me. El Elohim, we praise your holy name this morning. El Shaddai, Adonai, we glorify your name. Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, Lord of both angels and men, you are the Lord of hosts of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth, of Jews and Gentiles, of rich and poor, of master and slave. We glorify your majesty, your power and your authority, and we know that you will accomplish what you determined to do. Al Gibor, mighty God, we glorify you as the powerful and mighty warrior, the Messiah, the mighty God, and we know that you will accomplish the destruction of your enemies and the rule, and that you will rule with the rod of iron. Therefore, we pray to you this morning and ask that you will bless this sermon and that you will blind and deafen the evil forces now so that, they, that the evil forces will not intervene with this message today. They've already tried once. Sanctify us, O Yeshua, that we can stand before you dressed in white this morning as we confess our sins and ask that you will blot out our iniquities. Open our eyes and your hearts so that we will absorb the real truth like a sponge and be able to distinguish between the sugar-coated gospel the world wants us to believe and the eternal truth that you want us to know. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. So, by now you know that I do not sugarcoat the gospel. But today I'm going to sugarcoat things a little bit. And I will give you enough information so that you can make an informed decision. But I'm not going to give you all the detail of what really happens behind the curtains. Because it's rough. It's really extremely rough. I'm talking about Halloween. And we will look at the origin and what the churches say about Halloween. So I visited many websites in my research, Christian websites. And you'll remember that I told you previously that if you know or feel deep down that something is not right, then it isn't. So will you honestly tell me this morning that you as a Christian believer never queried the festivities of Halloween? It definitely clashes with what I, read, what I read from the Bible. The sad thing is many Christian churches see no problem with it. So what are we missing? If you know that it clashes with your inner being, then why have you not questioned it yet? Why do you not accept, why do you just accept the fact that many churches say that it's okay? If the Bible says do not fear, why would there be houses of horror to instigate and create fear during Halloween? Have you ever considered the fact that the haunted house which you think is so scary and so cute and you need to teach a child to man up creates an intense inner fear in that child with possible long-term spiritual and emotional damage? If Yahweh says you must love your neighbor, why does Halloween advertise blood and guts and bloodthirsty killers and scary clowns? Let's look at the origin. Many nations celebrate some form of Halloween in their traditions. If you look into it, you will see that people have real want to worship the dead and even pray to the dead. The festive days and customs may differ from country or from nation to nation, but they all have one thing in common. They bring honor to the dead or to the spirit. Mexico has a day of the dead where people hang out with candles and shapes, uh, candles in the shapes of skeletons and visit graveyards to communicate with the dead and bring them gifts. Many African countries have their days that they worship the dead, consult their ancestors, chase away the evil spirits and consult the good spirits for the guidance and bring them honor. Germany, Italy, Spain and other countries also have these days, a Halloween type day. Originally, in the English speaking countries, the Halloween comes from the Celtic festival called Sandheim, or also pronounced so in it is held in the third day around the first of November and it's a type of New Year's fest and harvest fest in one. The Celts believe that these three days are special because it's a crossover from the old to the new year but they also believe that it's also the time that the division or the wall between the physical and the spiritual world is down. So they believe that the dead and the spirits walk among us and especially those who died in the last year and are struggling to accept the cross over to the spiritual world. So they left food and treats from their crops to these spirits so that they will accept the good will and not curse their household when they fly over their home. The Catholic Church 
sorry, we, whole communities stood together to ward off the spirits so that the year ahead can be a good one. Others hold rituals and seances communicating with the dead to see the future in, in a supernatural way. They will use potions, black magic, magic words and spells or trances to contact the spirits for guidance and inspiration. During the night, they will make bonfires and bring offerings to the spirits and have their fortunes told. They will wear costumes, pay attention, they will wear costumes to look like animals so the spirits will not recognize them and harm them. Can you see the origin of the masks that we wear today? So the Catholic, Catholic Church later arrived on the scene and tried to convert the pagans to Christians. Pope Boniface declared on declared 13 May a holiday in 1609 after Christ and he called it All Saints Day where all the dead saints and martyrs were on it. Now here's a few saints for in case you didn't know. Saint Peter, Saint Paul, Saint Dominic, Saint Francis, Saint Anthony, Saint Thomas, Saint Patrick, Saint Teresa, Pope Saint John the 23rd, Pope Saint John Paul II. Now coming back to Saint Patrick, what is the Saint Patrick's Day all about? Honoring Saint Patrick? Just a thought. Let's continue. The priests tried to force the converted pagans to keep all the to keep the All Saints Day. But they did not want to. So on so in 835 after Christ, Pope Gregory IV moved All Saints Day to 1 November so that it will fall the same as the so infest. So that the new converted pagans can keep their tradition, but to keep saints uh, to keep the All Saints Day tradition as well. So here you can already see how the early church tried to capitalize from the popular pagan days while trying to spread the gospel. Like the so in All Saints Day started the previous day and was called all, was called all Saints Eve or All Hallows Eve, later shortened to Halloween, the Eve before Hallow, before the All Hallows Day. Now, like the so in the All Saints Day brought honor and worship to past important people and their spirits. So there's no real difference between the so in and All Hallows Day. The fact that the Catholic Church brings honor to their dead saints is no different from the honor that the so in brought to the Celts, is it? So the church continued to capitalize from the pagan feasts with bonfires and costumes. They also started leaving food for the poor to show kindness. The tricks that originally came from the spirits now manifested in the saints. Today, Christianity has kept nothing of the original intention of All Hallows Day. Today, children play, play the role of the demons who curse their household if they do not get sweets. Communication with the dead did not stop. In fact, it is now more, than, more open than ever before. The rituals and the sciences to communicate with the dead still continues. Animal shelters do not give animals for adoption during this time, especially not black cats. As black cats are of witches and has great superstitious values. During Halloween today, normal everyday people will kill black cats just because of the superstition it holds. So this is the day that, Christ, that was Christianized by the church. Let's see what the Bible says. Exodus 20 verse 1 to 5 reads, and I read from the Hebraic Roots Bible, And Elohim spoke all these words, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who, was, who has brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall not have any other Elohim before my face. You shall not make any graven image for yourself, or any likeness in the heavens above, or in the earth, in the earth beneath, or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow to them, and you shall not serve them, for I am Yahweh, your Elohim. I am a jealous owl, a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the sons, the fathers on sons, and the, to the third and the fourth generation, to those who hate me, and doing kindness to thousands, to those loving me, and those keeping my commandments. So what we just read here is that anything other than God should not be worshipped. Anything or any person for that matter like the martyrs or the saints. Luke 4 verse 8 reads, And answering to him, Yeshua said, 
Come behind me, Satan, for it has been written, You shall worship Yahweh, your Elohim, and Him only shall you serve. So what is happening in the original All Saints Day? Are they not worshipping saints? Bringing honor to dead saints? So let us scrape off some of that sugar coating, shall we? Deuteronomy 12 verse 29 to 32 reads, When Yahweh your Elohim shall cut off the nations from, from before you, where are you going to, where you are going in to possess them? And you shall possess them, and you shall live in their land. Take heed to yourself that you not be snared to follow them after they have been destroyed before you, and that you not inquire after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve the Elohim? And I shall do so, even I. You shall not do so to Yahweh your Elohim, for everything hateful to Yahweh, which he detests, they have done to their gods. For they have even burned their sons and their daughters in the fires to the gods. And all the things that I command you, take heed to do them, and you shall not add to it, and nor shall you take away from it. Yahweh himself says that he despises it. So if we look behind all the cute masks and sweets and cute ghosts from Halloween, it's idolatry. Worshipping idols, saints and other gods. Yahweh warns that you must not step in the trap and must not take part in this. Remember, if you look at a trap, there's always bait. Something cool to get your attention and lure you in closer and deeper. Then the hook comes out and you cannot get loose. The founder of the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey, said by dressing up or even coloring your face borders devil worship by dressing up in costumes you give satan permission and legal right to own you when you accept pagan practices you unconsciously hand yourself to satan he said i am glad that christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year welcome to Halloween. and that is on the church of satan's website Levay's statement is confirmed by the former Satanist John Ramirez who said that to dress up like an angel or a mermaid for Halloween you give Satan legal right to change your identity. He also said that there's, as much, there's a much darker reality behind the costumes and candy. John Ramirez who is now a Christian preacher said in an interview with CBS News on 20 October 2018 he said I was the general to the kingdom of darkness in witchcraft. I would sit with the devil and talk to him like I'm talking to you today. It was this kind of communication. It was that kind of relationship. So, are we going to think about Halloween again? Are we going to think about the underlying reasons why the church tries to justify Halloween? Because they Christianized it and sugarcoated it with sweets and tinsel and cool attractions. Because now we are not worshipping pagan gods or spirits any longer. We are now worshipping holy ones from the Bible and holy ones in history. So now you can make an informed decision. Where are you going? What are you teaching your kids? What truth is the world hiding from you? And then we think that we are on the right track regarding what Christianity really is. Let us pray. Abba Father, Yahweh Sabbath, the Lord of hosts, Lord both angels and of men, you are Lord of hosts in heaven and in the inhabitants of the earth, of Jews and Gentiles, of rich and poor, and master and slave. We glorify your majesty, your power, and your authority, and we know that you will accomplish what you determined to do. Our Gibber, Almighty God, we glorify you as the powerful and mighty warrior, the Messiah, the mighty God, and we know that you will accomplish the destruction of your enemies and rule with a rod of iron. We ask that you yourself will intervene today and protect all who is watching this today. That you will open their eyes and ears and their heart so that they will not be blind for the truth and for that what is really happening around us. We humbly ask that you will remind us to don our armor of Yahweh each day and every day and that you will protect us from evil. We ask that this message not be blocked and kept from the masses so that more people can understand and be saved from the bondage of evil. That they will understand that we are the, on the wrong path. 
And if we think that we will share you with other gods and other spirits and other dead people, thank you for your grace. Open our eyes and ears that we will not be blind for the truth, but we will instead strive to seek the truth in your word. That we will seek the truth and read the truth from the Bible like you intended it to be. And that we will not believe everything that is fed to us every day. I ask that you bless and protect each one who is listening today so that they will walk in the light this week and that they will be light to others. That they will be a light in the spiritual realm so that all evil will know that that person is a child of Yahweh and that that person may not be touched because Yahweh himself had anointed that person and that that person and that Yahweh says that you will not touch my anointed ones. In the name of Yahshua we pray. I'll give on. Amen. Go in the way of Yahweh and stand firm this week wearing your armor and I pray that Yahweh will bless you and protect you this week. Amen.